Hello everyone, today we'll discuss about functions of plasma protein. Starting with first function that is plasma proteins are important for the maintenance of osmotic pressure. Now, first of all, what is osmotic pressure? What is osmosis? Osmosis that is movement of solvent from high solvent concentration to low solvent concentration. When two solutions they are separated by semi-permeable membrane. Osmosis is a special type of diffusion. Now, what is osmotic pressure? It is the pressure which prevents osmosis. Now, this plasma proteins, they are also known as colloids. And capillary membrane is impermeable to colloids. Here it is written, capillary membrane is permeable to crystalloids, but it is impermeable to colloids. And the osmotic pressure exerted by this colloids it is known as colloid osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure exerted by colloids or plasma protein that is about 28 mm of mercury from, from which 19 mm of mercury is due to plasma proteins and 9 mm of mercury colloid osmotic pressure is due to donans effect. Now, colloid osmotic pressure it is inversely proportional to the size of the molecule and shape and it is directly proportional to concentration so which plasma protein is having highest concentration they exert highest colloid osmotic pressure and the plasma protein having least size they exert highest colloid osmotic pressure as we all know albumin concentration is highest in the plasma and therefore 80 percent of colloid osmotic pressure exerted by albumin and molecular weight of the albumin is also least whereas remaining 20% of colloid osmotic pressure is exerted by globin. You can see here these are various colloids present in the blood vessels and they exert colloid osmotic pressure. Now what is the importance of colloid osmotic pressure? Starling's hypothesis. As we all know that various pressures which are important for filtration. Which are those pressures? First you can see here this is capillary hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure exerted by the fluid which is flowing through the capillary. Here this is capillary hydrostatic pressure written as a PC. This capillary hydrostatic pressure increases filtration. Second pressure that affects the filtration that is plasma colloid osmotic pressure. Maximally it is exerted by albumin or you can say colloid osmotic pressure is exerted by plasma proteins. So colloid osmotic pressure decreases osmosis and as it decreases osmosis it decreases filtration. Okay, So favoring force here is PC capillary hydrostatic pressure and opposing force is plasma colloid osmotic pressure. Now let us discuss about the pressures in the interstitial fluid. Here you can see PIF written interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure. When the hydrostatic pressure inside the interstitial fluid increases it opposes filtration. Another pressure is interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure. If colloid substances are more in the interstitial fluid as the colloids they prevent osmosis and therefore they increase filtration as they prevent osmosis and they exert the pressure because of prevention of osmosis they pull the fluid towards themselves and therefore they increase filtration. So here you can see in normal capillary bed Capillary hydrostatic pressure and interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure they are favoring forces for filtration whereas plasma colloid osmotic pressure and interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure they are opposing forces. Now applied aspect if there is hypoproteinemia protein concentration decreases suppose child is suffering from protein energy malnutrition one of the example is kosher core. So what happens when protein concentration decreases in the blood? As the protein decreases, colloid osmotic pressure also decreases. 
and as colloid osmotic pressure decreases we have already discussed filtration increases because colloid osmotic pressure is the force which opposes filtration so here filtration increases and as the filtration increases that results in increased capillary permeability and the plasma protein and the fluid escapes and that results in edema what is edema that is collection of fluid in the interstitial tissue so this is the first function as we have discussed second function of plasma protein is they play an important role in the viscosity of the blood now what is viscosity that is the fluidity of the fluid and the viscosity depends on the molecules present inside the fluid blood is 4 to 5 times more viscous than the water and viscosity of blood depends on the cells rbcs wbcs and viscosity of plasma depends on plasma protein viscosity depends mainly on the size and shape of the protein molecules larger the molecule more viscosity is provided by them and therefore fibrinogen and globulin they provide more viscosity this is second function third function is they play an important role in the blood coagulation as the fibrinogen which is converted into fibrin at the time of blood clotting and the fibrin meshwork it plays an important role in the blood coagulation next function of plasma protein is they play an important role in the defense mechanism of our body that is by gamma globulins as we all know gamma globulins they are antibodies you can see here different varieties of immunoglobulins in our blood they are igg ige igd igm and iga now also they play an important role in the regulation of acid base balance or you can say they have a buffer action plasma proteins are responsible for about 15% of buffering capacity of blood now how do they act you can see here in the diagram plasma proteins as they are protein they consist of amino acids and these amino acids are amphoteric in nature means you can see here in the middle diagram you can see here when the ph is neutral this is the form of plasma protein you can see here it has mainly c w o h group you can see here this one and nh2 group this one nh2 and c w o h okay now when the ph falls or you can say when the ph becomes acidic so now we require to accept the h plus ion as what happens when ph becomes acidic buffers they accept h plus ion so you can see now h plus ion is accepted by this plasma proteins and now this nh2 group is converted into nh3 group okay so in acidic medium amino acids they act as base and they receive or they accept h plus ions now next when the ph rises or you can say when the ph becomes alkaline what happens here you can see this h plus ions are released from this c w group as we have discussed here it is c w h now the h plus ions are released so you can say in alkaline medium amino acids they act as acid and they release h plus ions so this is another function next function of amino acid that is they play an important role in the esr esr that is erythrocyte sedimentation rate now what is this esr when blood mixed with anticoagulant when it is placed in vestigrand pipette what happens erythrocytes the sediment and the rate of sedimentation of erythrocyte that is recorded and that is known as erythrocyte sedimentation rate and for the erythrocyte sedimentation rate large plasma proteins like globulin and fibrinogen they play an important role also plasma proteins are important in suspension stability of rbc now what is suspension stability as we have discussed esr esr means sedimentation rate of rbcs so when rbcs they sediment that is erythrocyte sedimentation rate and when rbcs sediment there is role formation or it is also known as piling of rbcs and when this happens 
when the blood is outside the body blood loses its stability and role formation or piling takes place but when the blood is in the circulation this role formation doesn't take place and therefore rbcs they suspend properly in the solution or in our blood and this is known as suspension stability of rbc and for the suspension stability of rbc globulin and fibrinogen of the plasma they play an important role another important role of the plasma protein is transport mechanism carbon dioxide is transported in bound form with the amino acid and the bound form is known as carbamino compound carbon dioxide plus amino acid of the plasma protein various hormones are also transported in bound form like thyroxine thyroxine binding globulin is present cortisol for cortisol we have transcortin that is also plasma protein vitamin a d and e they are also in bound form with the plasma protein like in hdl and ldl vitamin b12 that is bound with the transcobalamin bilirubin binds with albumin and globulin various drugs they also transported in the bound form with the albumin calcium ions are also transported in the bound form copper binds with the celluloplasmin hemoglobin binds with haptoglobulin and iron forms transferrin next important function of the plasma protein that is they produce trephon or coral substances now these substances are important for the nourishment of the tissue cells tissue cells they require nourishment and for that this trephon substances are produced and this substances are produced by leukocytes from the plasma proteins another function of the plasma protein is they play an important role in reserve proteins now what is the role of this reserve protein whenever we are having some clinical conditions like we are on fasting or we are not taking proper food containing proteins or because of disease or other condition when the catabolism of the body protein takes place in all these conditions plasma proteins they act as reserve proteins and they are used for the formation of new proteins so they act as reserve proteins another function that is fibrinolytic mechanism fibrinolysin that is a plasma protein which is present in inactive form which is known as pro fibrinolysin and whenever fibrin meshwork is formed this pro fibrinolysin gets activated to form fibrinolysin and this fibrinolysin causes lysis of the fibrin meshwork so this is all about functions of plasma proteins let us revise them first function that is they play an important role in the maintenance of colloid osmotic pressure second one that is they play an important role in the viscosity of the blood play an important role in the blood coagulation defense mechanism by gamma globulin acid base balance play an important role in the erythrocyte sedimentation rate role in the suspension stability of rbcs role in the transport mechanisms production of trephon or coral substances role in the reserve proteins and fibrinolytic mechanism so this is all about functions of plasma proteins thank you